the friends. Today we're going to talk about bicipital tendonitis. So this is one of our shoulder pathologies. Again, it gets a little bit confusing with all the other shoulder pathologies, like a rotator cuff tear, la di da do So yeah, that kind of throws people off because if you look at the anatomy, if you're on you know, YouTube or being able to see this as a video, you can see that supraspinatus tendon comes over and attaches to the greater tubercle, tubercle of the humerus. So that's in the same area, kind of goes hanging out with the long head of the biceps, which goes through the bicepital groove and then attaches onto the super glenoid tubercle of the, uh, uh, the scapula. And so you'll also see that you have the uh, short head of the biceps, which is going to attach to the coracoid process of the scapula. So very close to all the rotator cuff musculature as well. So sometimes things get a little bit uh, funky in there, but again, very different than a rotator cuff injury because you'll see stuff go down the arm all the way and affect the elbow. So um, similar kind of mechanism of injury is like rot rotator cuff tendonitis overuse, but big thing is just understand the different attachment points. So biceps long head is attaching to that superglenoid tubercle. And then it's gonna, the short head's going to attach to the coracoid process of the scapula. So that's going to be um, the other one. And then the distal attachment is going to be on the radius and bicipital aponeurosis of the um, radius down the elbow. So that's why I can perform supination because of that attachment on the radius. Bicipital groove is definitely important. And that subacromial space, that's also going to be where the uh, biceps tendon could get impinged, which is very similar to where the rotator cuff can get impinged. So again, very similar pathologies, but we're going to show you the differences between the two. Remember, you as a PTA are not differentially diagnosing. You are just trying to figure out how you can help this person and what movements are going to be probably painful and to move accordingly with that so you don't overexert or exacerbate your patient's symptoms. Again, etiology, as I said before, overuse is the most common etiology. So repetitive reaching, pulling, overuse during exercise. So various different athletes are at a huge risk for that. This is huge in the athletic population. Overhead athletes, big ones, swimmers, pitchers, volleyball, baseball, all of those very high risk because of that overhead reaching impinges the subacromial space. Again, you're going to get that rotator cuff and bicipital tendonitis kind of a two for one special up through there, through that long head of the biceps. Uh, racket or club sports tend to be big ones. So golf, um, volleyball tends to be thrown in with that as well. Uh, so volleyball, tennis, all that stuff. Um, that should have said tennis. I don't know why I was saying volleyball. I should say tennis, golf, tennis, pickleball. Oh my gosh. Y'all see so many pickleball players up in the clinic nowadays. They are all coming on in. So like for those of you who have access to the PowerPoint, I'll, I'll edit that to say tennis. But yeah, these pickleball players, they come in with like all the injuries because it's like people who are coming in. They're like, yeah, you know, I play with the league on the weekends and we don't warm up. And then now like everything hurts and I'm my, my like I've torn the outside of my ankle, my shoulder hurts, my wrist hurts. Like it's a whole thing. But uh, pickleball is now beat CrossFit for the most injuries so as a crossfit person i'm like yay but yes you'll see a lot of this uh basically more of that overuse sort of thing there is such thing as a traumatic biceps tear rupture where you see like the popeye sign where it's like uh, detached if you want to google what that looks like go for it but if you're queasy i would avoid that but yeah this is a non-traumatic injury so bicipital tendonitis which is what this video is about is a non like traumatic injury it's overused repetitive over time grinding it down tearing it up um that's what we're seeing that traumatic bicipital tendon rupture uh, i saw somebody have double one doing like a bicep curl Ooh, not my no makes me nauseous thinking about it yeah that's a completely different thing so this tendonitis think overuse. And that's for any sort of tendonitis. Always think overuse. So what does it look like? Again, it's going to be difficulty performing the action of the biceps. So understanding it's not just shoulder flexion and elbow flexion, which can be painful with a rotator cuff. Also supination. So supination is that also big component that kind of shows, okay, yeah, biceps is involved. The biceps is actually the main supinator of the arm. Fun fact. Um, and so pain when stretching into pronation, elbow and shoulder extension. So if you put your arm behind you, pronate it and stick it behind you, extend your elbow, you're going to have the maximum stretch on the um, biceps. So again, anything that's going to stretch the biceps is going to hurt because you're stretching on torn tendons and then contracting the torn tendons and like, and not ligaments, tendon and muscle is going to be 
painful. So both of those are going to be painful. Tenderness to palpation along the bicipital attachment. So remember, supralenoid tubercle, coracoid process, and then that distal bicipital aponeurosis at the insertion point. Now, there are two special tests that we would see with this patient. This is Speed's test and Jurgensen's test. So Speed's test, the patient's going to supinate their arm, and they're going to stick it into 90 degrees of flexion, and the patient does an MMT, and the PT does an MMT on the patient's arm. So essentially, it's a flexion MMT, but your palm is facing the ceiling. That's Speed's test. Jurgensen's test, your arm's at 90-90, so 90 degrees of well, it's at 90 degrees of, sorry, not 90-90, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, and then it's slightly like externally rotated and it's supinated. So then they're going to press down there as they go into a little bit of flexion and that's going to cause pain. So it kind of essentially looks like a biceps MM, MMT test. Um, so basically big thing, supinated, flexed shoulder. And then for the Jurgensen's, you'll have the flexed elbow. For speeds, it's extended. But just know if you see either one of these, you know it's biceps, 100% biceps. That's what's going on here. And the difficulty lifting heavy objects or pulling up. So like if you're holding a box, carrying a box, like in this picture, or pulling something up or trying to like do a rope climb or something crazy like that, I don't know. All of that's going to be painful because it's that pulling motion of the biceps, which is its action. So how are we treating it? Again, same way we would treat any sort of tendonitis anywhere else. In that acute phase where it's super flared up, rest, range of motion, ice is still on the boards. Y'all know how I feel about that. Um, and then TENS is going to be a big one. So all of the pain relieving modalities, use those. If you need to do joint mobilizations, you're picking joint mobilizations one or two. You're not doing three or four. One and two are used for um, pain relief. So you're doing those. Pharmalo pharmacological management, such as NSAID. So ibuprofen, Tylenol, ibuprofen, and Advil is going to work better. Um, those can help decrease the pain. Now, again, y'all know how I feel about that and what the actual research is out now, but the boards is still saying this. So I'm going to keep teaching it until the board say, says no. Um, and then activity modification ex and then education to avoid overuse injuries in the future. So again, if your patient is playing pickleball, on the weekends without warming up, you might be like, yay, hey, man, maybe warm up first before you pickle the ball, <laughs> basically. I love pickleballers. I really, I really do. They're a fun population to work with. They never listen to me, but they're fun people. And I've had patients teach me and like we do pickleball lessons. It's been great. Um, But yeah, teaching them, hey, maybe warm up first or hey, maybe stop paying pickleball for a week so you can let your arm rest and then we can actually try to fix fix it and stuff like that. Uh, maybe have you considered biking <laughs> or something that's not going to use their arms as much? Uh, that might be helpful. And I'm talking like Peloton bike. Uh, so uh, progressive stretching or strengthening as the patient moves into the subacute stage. So that's where you start introducing that biceps like movement. So that flexion, the elbow flexion of the shoulder supination sort of thing. Strengthening them, getting that tendon uh, stronger after it's finally uh, relaxed from being inflamed. And then in rare cases, PT, it doesn't work. The patient might need surgery um, because it could start continuing to progress towards a rupture. So it becomes more than just a tendonitis. It becomes like an actual rupture. Uh, and some patients might need that decompression surgery up in the subacromial space, similar to the rotator cuff tendonitis uh, that uh, we talked about. That might also be a big one. If you're in my course, the video's in there. I don't know if this if that one's on YouTube yet. But uh, sometimes a patient might need that decompression surgery to make the subacromial space better and avoid further deterioration of the tendon. So keywords, bicipital groove. So all the anatomical structures, very important for knowing for this condition. Bicipital groove and like all the attachment points. So tenderness of the bicep at the origin, insertion spots, I'll know all those. Overuse injury, big one for tendonitis. So that repetitive reaching, uh, the overhead athletes, volleyball, tennis, pickleball, swimming, and then racket sports like or like club sports like golf and stuff like that. And that, that pain with that elbow flexion. So that any sort of action of the biceps, that's going to be super painful for the patient. Alrighty, let's get into the sample question. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient with bicipital tendonitis of the short head of the biceps tendon. In which location would palpation result in increased tenderness? So one, acromion, two, coronoid process, three, coracoid process, or four, bicipital groove. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that.
All right, friends, so the answer is going to be coracoid process of the scapula. So as we kind of know, let's look at our anatomy here. You might have got confused between coronoid and coracoid. You got to know the spelling, guys. That one letter is going to throw you off. All right, so let's talk about this. We have our um, tendon of our biceps. The long head of the biceps goes through the bicipital group, attaches to the supraglenoid tubercle of the uh, humerus. So here's the thing, guys. Coracoid is on the scapula. Coronoid is going to be on the distal uh, humerus. So different spot, not the same uh, process, not the same process. I want to make sure you guys know your anatomy. The short head of the biceps will originate at the coracoid process of the scapula. So that's why we'd have increased tenderness, especially if it's the going to be the short head, which is what the question was saying. It will be painful there. A chromium might be painful if we're talking about the long head. Again, not really, nothing attaches there. From the biceps so it's just going to be a space like maybe if you push down on it it starts like not feeling good i don't know my chromium doesn't feel good if you touch it just anyways as like itself so um might not feel the best but again we're talking about the short head of the biceps which is all the way over here on the cor coracoid process of the scapula and so then our other answer was uh yeah we went over all those answers cool awesome know your anatomy guys Some, somebody asked me today hey what's more important knowing the anatomy or knowing the pathology. I said knowing how the anatomy affects the pathology and how the pathology directly relates back to a deficit in the anatomy. So sorry, I can't pick one, guys. Y'all got to know. Got to know that. There will be questions on the boards that you won't know. That's okay. I just want to make sure y'all feel good about this one. All right, friends. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.